Namaste and welcome to the National Center for Biological Sciences in Bangalore, India. Here, in the lab of Satyajit Meyer, we try to understand the organization of multiple components at the surface of living cells. The plasma membrane is the skin of a cell. It is what defines the boundary of any cell. One could visualize the plasma membrane as a sea of lipids embedded with a collection of proteins. The classical textbook picture of the plasma membrane is that of the fluid mosaic model proposed by Singer and Nicholson in the 1970s. According to this model, the cell membrane is a two-dimensional fluid in which lipids and proteins diffuse. A current understanding of plasma membrane organization has evolved from this fundamental idea to a more complex picture. Here we have a cell expressing a fluorescently tagged GPI-anchored protein on its membrane. A close look using specialized microscopy techniques that employ FRET-based fluorescence and isotropy measurements reveals a heterogeneous FRET map. There are red zones that have a less FRET signal. These are rich in monomers. They are separated by more blue zones that have a higher FRET signal. These were found to be enriched in tiny clusters of GPI anchored proteins. Quite remarkably, we find that the activation of receptors that bind the extracellular matrix protein can locally enhance such GPI nanoclustering events. My research in the lab is to understand how the activation of certain receptors triggers this active machinery that drives the generation of these localized domains. We are trying to uncover the, how the signaling functions of these domains in turn contribute to the receptor function itself. Coupled to the cell membrane, you find the actin-rich cortex, a dynamic and complex entity. Even though only a few hundred nanometers thick, its structure and composition has been the focus of an interdisciplinary research effort for many years. My interest lies in this understanding of active processes in the cytoskeleton, driving membrane organization. For this, I set up a minimal system in a test tube based on a synthetic lipid bilayer and purified or isolated cytoskeletal proteins. So, we understand now the actin cortex as a composition of long actin filaments creating a meshwork surrounded by a fluid film of shorter ones. That leads to a hierarchy of membrane processes. Short filaments can be pulled together by myosin motors dragging along some of the membrane components while the meshwork acts as a barrier for membrane particles, confining them into small areas. Understanding how such a fluid film of short filaments behaves on large scales when it is driven by energy-consuming processes is the subject of active mechanics. So I'm a theorist who studies the formation and dynamics of emergent structures in an active polar fluid, such as actin and myosin, and I'm interested in how these structures can be used by the cell surface to effectively process information. Working in this language, our group and others have shown that from the active mechanics of actin filaments and myosin motors emerge compact transient contractile platforms called asters. And we think that these asters are the source for the clustering of membrane proteins like GPI anchored proteins on the nanometer scale. The ATP consuming nature of these asters is reflected in the observed violation of thermal equilibrium principles by several cell surface proteins. It forces us to reconsider the cell surface as a composite that operates out of equilibrium. How do the GPI anchored proteins at the outer leaflet communicate with the actin cytoskeleton beneath the inner leaflet? These dynamic actin filaments could couple to the GPI anchored proteins via a trans bilayer coupling mechanism involving lipids. We found that phosphatidyl serine, an inner leaflet lipid, is a key player involved in coupling the GPIs to actin. Utilizing a combination of different approaches, ranging from microscopy to molecular dynamic simulations, we found that efficient trans bilayer coupling can occur only if there are long saturated GPIs and PS on either leaflets. At the start of the simulation, you can see that GPIs and PS are unable to establish a connection as they are unconstrained at the surface. On immobilizing PS, the trans bilayer coupling is strengthened and this is exactly what actin is doing. Now that we have teased out the mechanism of trans bilayer coupling at the level of lipids, the next question is on the actin adapters that link PS to actin and that's exactly where we are heading. In the future, we think that the studies of how the membrane lipids and proteins couple to this active uh, actin based uh, um, substructure 
will dictate the precise organization of membrane components in living cells.